What's the word, y'all? Welcome back to Call Gang, Kenny For Real, whatever you want to call it. I have decided today. Just for this episode specifically, I want to try to stay as positive as possible. Honestly, this is my only negative thing. We had like a 10-game slate or so. Not a lot of stuff happened today. It wasn't like super close games, super interesting games. We had a couple. But overall, it's kind of a a weird mid-day of basketball. But you know what? I'm always here to talk about it. Leave a like, subscribe if you are new, and let's get into it. I want to talk about, start off this video talking about the Utah Jazz, which is going to be interesting to look at the analytics here. Because I'm going to have the Utah Jazz as the title and in the thumbnail. And as a smaller market team with no like real superstar i wonder how many people are going to actually click on this video let's talk about them um they've been a team that has been under the radar for most of the season um as of right now they're still playing against the dallas mavericks but they up about 25 so i'm just assuming they're going to put this one away but they beat the dallas mavericks um two times this week without donovan mitchell in the lineup because he's in concussion protocol and and the team is on an 11 game win streak the best record in the league but somehow all that being said with them being a top offense and then being a top defense not many people are talking about them. Or or let's be honest, even if you are talking about them, you probably aren't putting them in the upper echelon of the L.A. teams or the Milwaukee's out east or the, the Brooklyn Nets. You know what I'm saying? For some reason, they're still on this second tier on NBA fans. And that's under, that's understandable because we've seen them do these things where they go on these win streaks. But you know what? I think that this time is different. I don't I'm going to say this right up top. I do not know if they are contenders. I don't know just yet. But a lot of the things that that are better this year point of like, man, this team might be really good. This team is on an 11 game win streak, best record in the NBA without Bogdanovich even really finding himself just yet. Just yet. Today, he was great. Today, he has 27 points, 8 of 12 shooting. He was great today. But other than this, he was shooting like 35% from the field. From the field. And he was averaging like 12 points. They have put together this amazing win streak without one of their top offensive guys playing well. I mean, last year was a 20-point-per-game score, y'all. So a lot of things have changed for them while a lot of things haven't. Like, the roster is completely the same. They did not do any rotational things different. But the numbers tell you. And the eye test tell you this team is shooting an absurd amount of threes in comparison to anything they've ever done before. I really I really enjoy coaches that are able to, even without having roster moves, adapt their team to play better. And that's basically what Quinn Snyder has done, right? They're shooting an extreme, an extreme amount of threes at a high, high clip. And maybe that's what's maybe a little bit scary for me still because they're shooting so efficiently. I can't imagine them doing this for the whole 72-game season and then in the playoffs, especially with a guy like Jordan Clarkson cannot miss. He's always been a streaky player or streaky shooter in his career, but as of right now, he cannot miss. And part of me is like, okay, is it even a streak anymore if we're about 20 games in a year and he's still playing this on fire? Could it still be a streak 20 games in? Or is this just really the player that he has He has blossomed into? You don't really know. But as of right now, he's got to be leading as far as six men of the year goes because even today there were so many possessions in this first half where the man just dribbled up court and shot the ball. Quinn Snyder's running out rotations and lineups. So this is a team of, that has four shooters and I'm gonna I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna classify Russ in there a little bit in there four players on the perimeter that you absolutely have to defend at the perimeter we're talking about people that can hit it off the dribble we're talking about people that can hit it and catch and shoot they have a very very lethal team they have a very very lethal team and that opens the game up so much more for Rudy Gobert I know his counting stats may be down from his last year where he was an all-star his impact might be even greater right now which is crazy to say because of his counting stats are so down. It is it is a joy to watch. If you're not watching Utah Jazz right now, you're really missing out. Um, and one of the things that has changed dramatically between last year and this year is Mike Conley has found himself, right? One of the reasons I was so high on the Utah Jazz last year is because they traded for one of my guys, Mike Conley. And right before they traded for him, he was coming off like back-to-back seasons where he was playing his best basketball. So him and Donovan Mitchell in the backcourt, I'm assuming this is about to be great. And he didn't find his footing at all. All last year, the best he played was a couple games in the bubble, but he pretty much with the whole year of being like this, right? He was he was a wave this year so far. He is he has been clean. He has been solid and he honestly could be an all star conversations, but it's Mike Conley. So, you know, he won't actually get it, but he could be getting a couple votes here and there. He's playing to that level. Joe Ingles last year was trying. They were trying to figure out, is he our six man now or is he going to be in the rotation? And that kind of threw off his little his fire a little bit. Congratulations to him for passing John Stockton on all time threes of the Utah Jazz. But I know, I think he knows his role now. I'm going to be that guy coming off the bench as long as we're completely healthy. And I'm going to come in. I'm going to play that lethal ass pick and roll Rudy Gobert. And I'm going to hit spot up threes. As long as he knows his role and he's playing that, it is amazing. And like I said, 
Bogdanovich hasn't found his footing just yet. This team is really, really scary. But the reason why why I believe that maybe they just aren't there just yet, because in a series against one of the L.A. teams, who the hell is guarding the perimeter other than Royce O'Neal? Now, Joe Ingles has been a good defender in his career. I think he's maybe taking a little step back recently um, because he's getting older. Same thing with Bogdanovich. I remember the series with LeBron versus Bogdanovich. Bogdanovich played pretty solidly um, guarding LeBron. But they don't have multiple wing defenders that I would trust in a playoff series against some of the better wing players in the Western Conference, right? That's the main thing. And even though the counting stats may not say this, Donovan Mitchell hasn't played this week, but like when you watch him play, his decision making has got dramatically better this season in comparison to even last year. And those are all promising signs because <laughs> if you ask Shaq, his playmaking is what puts him to the next level. So I'm excited about this team. I need to see a little <laughs> – it's crazy to say this about a team on an 11-game win streak that, that are blowing out teams. I need to see a little bit more before I put them in a con, like a real contender, but I'm super excited that Utah basketball is, is at this point right now. Wow, there was a lot of talk about the Utah Jazz, but I had to do it. I don't know how many other platforms out there are talking about the Jazz, and they deserve a ton, a ton of love. I said I was going to keep positive, so I will not talk about the Dallas Mavericks today, but if they lose their next game, they may be the topic of the next video because – I'm keeping positive, so I'm not even going to talk about it. Uh, the next game that I got to watch portion of was um, the Hornets beating the Pacers. Um, speaking of positivity, Malik Monk has been in the rotation for the past week or so, and that's always promising. I know Malik Monk was kind of in the doghouse uh, with some of the things that happened off the court. I don't, Of course, we don't know the actual specifics of it, but obviously uh, James Borrego wasn't confident with playing them, but recently he has gotten to that lineup. Um, you didn't get a lot of Bismack Biyombo minutes, which is promising because you're going against the Indiana Pacers, who are such a dominant team down low. They didn't necessarily need to play their bag bigs, which is great. I'm still waiting for the day they put um, – um, who's the other rookie that they drafted, the big guy? Vernon Carey? Is that, is that the guy? Either way, I want to see him. No Martin brother minutes is always good, and they hit some timely timing threes. Terry Rozier hit a big one, and then uh, Devontae Graham hit a big one, and they got a, they got another one. They got another one. Next, the Atlanta Hawks beat the Washington Wizards. Positive thing, um, Russell Westbrook looked more like Russell Westbrook today than he had looked in the first nine games of the season for him. So that's promising for the Washington Wizards. I know he ended up getting ejected, but he was aggressive. Um, he had some shots. I think he had three threes in the first half, and I'm like, oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, they lost though. Rui Hachimura's back in the lineup. But on the other side of things, Trey Young, he's getting that magic back. And that's all you can really ask for. Um Rondo, his counting stats may not have looked like much eight and four, but I promise you when he was on the court, things look look fluid. And that's basically what they've been missing in the backup point guard since Rondo had been out. So it's good to see him out there. And I think we got an updated timetable on Chris Dunn. That was like two more weeks. So eventually Chris Dunn will be on that court. That's all I gotta say. Let's talk about Emmanuel quickly. Thibodeau in the New York Knicks. Oh my God! Quickly, twenty-five, five and three for Emmanuel. Quickly, and now, now let's let's be honest, Tom Thibodeau. I know he's a guy that loves his veterans, but you gotta start quickly at this point, bro. He is literally outplaying Alfred Payton on every account, every way, every way possible. He's outplaying Alfred Payton. There's no way he shouldn't be starting. Um, but another great game from him. It is so amazing how much Tom Thibodeau can change a culture, right? And I had I had forgot about it. That he did it to my team, and I still forgot about it. When he signed the Knicks, I didn't have an opinion on. It. I was like, ah, uh, could be good, could be bad. I should have been all positive because I know he's an amazing defensive-minded coach, and he can legitimately change the culture. As of right now, my dog Koba walked into the room. But as of right now, they have the these young players that are playing where R.J. Barrett, another big game, Emmanuel quickly. They have all the draft picks from the Porzingis trade, and they're looking like they're getting out of that good. And they also still have their own draft picks while staying competitive. They're building the coach. They have a lot of cap space. So New York Knicks basketball, is it back? Who really knows? Speaking of positives, um, Yuta Watanabe was a big positive today. Even though the Raptors ended up catching an L, he had a lot of big moments later in this game, which which helped them. Um, because w this is the thing for the for the Raptors so far this season. They will have games where one of their players have amazing games. And, and this today it was Pascal Siakam, third quarter. He was lethal. Um, but they haven't been able to put it together for everybody, right? We haven't had a Fred Van Vliet game with a Pascal Siakam game, with a Kaulari game. And it's one of the main reasons why they're struggling. And obviously the center play. Um, I think in the first half, a guy that was barely in the rotation and Hassan Whiteside had like 12 points. They don't have center play, and they got dominated down there today. Um, but when it comes to the Sacramento Kings, what is it, three-game win streak? Three-game win streak. I knew it was rough <laughs> for the Raptors today when De'Aaron Fox hit a step back three in the corner. I was like, yeah, they not winning this one, bro. Talk it up. They just getting unlucky today because De'Aaron Fox don't do that. He hit it with three threes, bro. When was the last time De'Aaron Fox hit three threes in the game? 
and shot 60% from three. It doesn't happen. And Tyrese didn't even shoot the ball well, but he hit the biggest shot of the game. I saw a lot of uh, Raptors fans upset about the ejection, and I understand that. Um, I understand that. But when he got ejected, Cal Lowry we're talking about, they were down by four with no timeouts. They, they couldn't do anything, unless you thought Cal Lowry was about to hit a four-point full-court shot. Um, but like I said, they can't get their three stars to all put together tonight uh, on the same night, and that's one of the reasons. The Pelicans? <laughs> Is this the, the re, the, this is a good game for the Pelicans, obviously because they won. But they were running, y'all. They were running. We got the best of Lonzo Ball because they allowed him to be a point guard. And he was running. Um, the the thing about the Pelicans is obviously they have a lot of good pieces here, right? Um, and I wish that they didn't have to play like all of their games on national TV, right? I wish they were one of those teams that can grow and like their own little corner instead of having this big old microfi uh, microfine glass on it because they have Zion, because they have Brandon Ingram, and they're always on national TV. This is a really good game against a really good team. And the best part about it is not just because they won, but they were able to stop the storm that was the Milwaukee Bucks in that second half. Um, like I said, I'm, st I'm sticking to the positivity and Giannis taking over in that second half. I mean, the Pelicans really struggled to guard him, but they did it enough where they can win. Steven Adams rebounding was absolutely incredible. Zion as a playmaker is still getting better. It seems like almost nightly, like things are things are going very well. He was getting he was getting double teamed. I remember literally he threw like a kind of like a no look curve around pass to Steven Adams. It's like if he can play make like that and also be dominant down low, the league is really in trouble. Everybody's in trouble. It's, it's going to be hard to guard him because, as of, I mean, his early in his career, he's kind of like head down. I'm getting to the rim, right? He didn't really look at his peripheries and find the open man. He's starting to do that so far. Eric Bledsoe hitting seven threes against his old team is actually funny, and then Drew Holiday ended up having a bad game against his old team. So, you know, it's just the way things work. Um, a DMP coach's decision from JJ Redick. People were speculating that maybe a trade is going down. We don't really know. He's been struggling this year. Um, he was going to be a guy on the buyout market. I think that's all I really wanted to cover today. Joel Embiid had another MVP-type performance when his team needed it. I mean, he's been guarded by Ed Davis. I expected him to go off, and he ended up doing that. Um, the Clippers consistently stay positive, um, doing doing things. I'm going to do a whole episode on the, the new Clippers. Don't get me wrong. Uh, but I, I want to see them go against another really good team, so it's like a thumbnail and a title and stuff. Um, the Nets scored 150 points in regulation without Kevin Durant, so <laughs> good good loss for the OKC Thunder because uh, Theo Maladon played really well. And then the Spurs. Oh, last thing on the Spurs. I, I, I want to mention them really quick. Um, might be a top three most fun team to watch as of right now. That's all I really want to say. I told y'all that I bought all the Keldon Johnson stock. Some of y'all were saying I was late to the party. My apologies. Um, DeMar is still playing at a lethal level. And then today, DJ um, uh, DeJounte Murray was really good. The ball moves so well with this team. It is incredible. It is incredible. Okay. That's it. Shout out to my boy Koba for barging in on me while I was recording the video. And not barking. That was the big thing. He didn't bark. Huh. Thank y'all so much for watching. Leave it a like. Subscribe. Call game.